everyone today on reading fiction on linkedin we are discussing a series that is personally very close to my heart because it is what started me to start exploring mythological fiction and that is the meluhash series or the shiva's trilogy by amish i remember finding this book randomly in one of those libraries and i had this moment where the book called to me just like how the cheese calls to tom from tom and jerry and i floated into the bookshop and spent like 700 rupees to buy the trilogy 700 rupees that i absolutely did not have because i was in third year college and that 700 rupees meant i had to eat awful uh, hostel food <laughs> for a while so i i do not regret making this choice because this book uh this entire series to be very honest it's pretty cool because you have uh, shankar and then you have shiva and then you have mahadev and you have all of these different entities that to the elderly you know to people who have lived significant amount of years uh, to you spirituality probably you know comes easy because you have years on you but to those of us who are younger to those of us who are questioning faith and things about life when we see a fictional book of this sort which makes it very clear that this is fiction and not reality uh, you you kind of find yourself asking questions i actually picked up shiv puran the original shiv puran after reading the series because i wanted to check ki is what i read in amish's book real like is something of this sort possible is deification of a dude in the indus valley civilization the reason behind why we have someone like shiva in our mythology i had all of these questions as like a random 21 year old and i think for uh talking about the merits of reading fiction there's no better book i could put forth from a personal experience than this so welcome to all the wonderful six people who are listening and to my absolutely gorgeous co-host supriya anangsha will be joining us soon and today i i mean i said we are going to do spoilers but i am going to keep it spoiler free i mean we'll do some spoilers here and there but the major things we won't talk about the major things because we don't want you to not experience this book if you have not read the book already so supriya uh, give us your rough i suppose thoughts on this book Hi everyone! Thank you, Vinipi, again for hosting this wonderful series, which is like so close to my heart. Um, I am in a different part of the world where I've just finished my work, and let me tell you, I could not finish my work early enough. I always look forward to our Tuesday calls, and I'm very happy that you've picked up a book which is popular, and also some a book which has like very deep memories for me. So. when you shared about you know the memory of you going into the bookstore and buying the book i could relate to that because i also had to give up uh, you know uh, food money and eat the bad uh, meals that was that was like that was there in the hostel but the the taste wasn't so bad because i was reading the book as i was eating so for those two meals because i finished this book in like one and a half days for those two meals the food was okay and uske baad i was like are kya kar liya maine wala cheez but um uh, i knew about this book because um there was someone who was saying oh you know we should have a book uh, that talks about uh, uh, the indian gods and the indian mythology and that the my phase in college was like yes i do believe in like you know the stories that we were told as we grew up but there has to be a scientific understanding behind it and you know that's something that most of us go through right when you're transitioning between uh stories that you grew up with and when you start experiencing world on your own and then there's a bit of a transition conflict say what you want to whether what you've grown up with is that true or not so things like that so when i heard that you know there's this book uh, that's coming out and no idea who the author was and and usually i don't read books according like by the authors only a few authors that i really enjoy reading but it's always like you know the story the premise the synopsis and sometimes the cover of the book for me 
So yes, I do judge a book by its cover. Um, but yes, so when this book came out, I don't remember how much I spent. But yes, I did spend a considerable amount of, on it. And it felt like someone has answered all the questions and the turbulence that I had. And I'm not saying it that in a profound manner. So it's not like, hey, I got a life of life or something. This book served the purpose. It's like, hey, here's a story that you've heard almost all of your, all your life. So regardless of which religion background you come from, if you were in India, chances are you've heard stories about Shiva, Mahadev, the different forms that, you know, this God had. And it's like, here's a story that you've heard growing up. How about a different perspective on it? So bringing a human, human form to like a story that we heard and it's like it's one of those cool gods like I, I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone but it was like almost like okay this is here's a cool god out of the three gods who's like you know has a style of his own does things of his own like does not follow rules etc etc so like growing up he was like the cool god that we could follow without getting like reprimanded by our parents right I very distinctly remember when I was reading this book and my mom saw the cover and she was like what are you reading? I was like, this is a book on Shiva. She's like, oh yeah, by all means, read. That's that's completely fine. She was so happy that I was reading a book on, you know, uh, gods and I wasn't uh, reading something that would uh, corrupt my mind as she used to say in those days. So uh, you asked me for a brief thought. That's like my detailed uh, thought on the book. Very excited to get into this discussion with you and can't wait to hear what you and the listeners have to share. I see a couple of recognizable faces in the listener panel and i'm so happy to see you guys uh, absolutely uh, this is an appeal to the listeners if anyone wants to talk about this book feel free to raise your hand we keep this room small intentionally because we want to hear from each other we had uh, the last week highlight one of the passages one of the forgotten passages from amitav ghosh and it was so beautiful to have her come on stage and do that literally activate nostalgia on books we haven't read for the longest time so feel free to come on up and discuss anything related to this author or book if you so desire on to some things you said you know which i found so relatable uh, and this is why this is why we are such good friends supriya our brief is generally paragraphs and paragraphs long reason number one <laughs> reason number two we do judge books by their covers and we are honest about it there's actually a lot of market research that goes behind the cover that you see in all of these traditionally published books it's an expensive affair and it is done just so that wonderful human beings like supriya stumble into bookshops stop and they're like oh what is this and they pick it up so absolutely almost everybody judges a book by their cover very few admit to doing that so thank you for uh, being honest i do buy books uh, by the cover i have some books some bo- what i call placeholder books that are just there to make my library look pretty because they have this wonderful dark academia vibe to them i have not read these books i absolutely do not know what's in these books it was just the cover supriya so there you go uh on to the aspects oh did we lose supriya i hope she i hope she comes back and we have aniket also today are aniket please if you have read any of amish's book please come up because you are one of those uh, amazing readers who matlab aap to book ghot ke pee jate ho you know as 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 they say so having someone like you share their two three cents today would be fabulous uh, on to something else that you said regarding the different forms and regarding the demystification of the character uh, with young people right one scene which a lot of young people vibe with and there's a trigger warning alert alert for religious people if you get offended by discussions um, where some mythological religious character is being discussed and you go ye galat hai uh, please please <laughs> drop off because we are discussing a fiction book theek hai we are not discussing mythology at all hum fiction book ke bare mein baat kar rahe hain so there is a scene where uh, 
he's going through a lot of guilt right he's going through a guilt we know why he feels this guilt one of the most beautiful aspects of this book in my opinion is how from book 1 uh, this man who feels such low self worth goes on to say something of this sort very confidently like when he says i am the nilkant in the book you feel that you feel a man gaining his self worth back from let's say the loss that we gradually come to discover as we flip through the pages uh, when we meet him in the mountains and he's looking over at the city right doing some chillam things we are like oh my god shiva bhagwan ki book mein chillam aise kaise right did you have this thought did you have this thought supriya <laughs> while reading the book because i did i was so shocked and then i was i i immediately googled is there any truth to this and that's when i discovered uh, <laughs> marijuana is part of shiv worship i was so shook as a teenager i have to say i was honestly worried that this book will probably look at that i'm going to be just drunk jump to like my book should not be doing that because i knew that uh, the mythology around also included uh with bhang jisko bolte hain right yes so it was like oh my god this book is going but then i soldiered on and i'm just now when i was reading back just to prepare for this for this event right i was like oh, this small part of the whole book and i i thought that was at that time mm so to say um supriya i think we lost you for a minute in the end uh, uh i think you're walking while you're talking and the microphone is swaying here and there i th- i think yes this is much better yes could could you repeat the penultimate part of your point i was just saying i had to chip in and say what i experienced at that point because This is an amazing thing of revising the go right is say do you remember the major flaws sometimes when you're discussing it you know the minor things that you felt that i think mm thank you for having yeah yeah fair enough we finally have anangsha with us anangsha let's start with you your initial thoughts about the book and then um, what what did you enjoy the most reading while reading it because i'm guessing all of us were pretty new to being adults when this book came out hi hi vinati hi everyone thank you so much uh, for having me i'm so sorry for being super late but yeah i'm finally here so yeah vinati like you mentioned new to being adults i i think i read this book when i was in school i'm not 100% sure but i have that memory Uh, so probably i was in school or maybe like 11 12 i don't remember exactly but i i i loved the first book i loved the immortals of meluha so much because um, that was the uh, phase right i had that phase in my life where i was uh, in in this phase of rebelling against religion and you know rebelling against what my parents told me was true and i was forming my own beliefs and stuff and i read this story and i saw shiva being portrayed in such a different cool manner i was i was very i found it very exciting and i found it very interesting the way it was written and the way it was portrayed because it was also very visual like i had clear images in my mind of what the places would look like and how the whole in the valley thing would look like it was so fascinating like combination of history and mythology and making the characters real right not making them like super god like or with super powers it was very interesting for me i loved the first book so much then i waited for the second book to come the secret of the nagas and when it came my mind was blown like it was so amazing the final reveal at the end was like insane i didn't expect that it was amazing uh, but i guess with the third book I was a little bit let down because I was expecting the same level of uh, normal people doing amazing cool things, 
but in the last book amish did use a lot of magic which i didn't like because i liked the series in the beginning because there was no magic everybody was like a normal person and they were doing normal things but had incredible results so that was my uh, impression of the third book because i was sort of let down but in general talking about just immortals of meluha i think it's a really nice book uh, i haven't read it reread it since then but all my memories from uh, school times i i think it's a great book and i really enjoyed the characters and i really enjoyed the way in which they met nothing seemed very contrived it didn't seem like the author is forcing anything it felt very natural and i really enjoyed reading it 100% agree with everything you said i think that that is why the third book doesn't get liked like book 1 and 2 the third book shows us the puppet master right someone has been interfering throughout behind the scenes and uh, someone has been orchestrating things uh taking the name of the character probably not cool so i'll type it in our chat uh, in the corner but uh, it demystifies the allure of the first book that hooked us right the book hooked us with this premise of normal man does extraordinary things by leveraging the power of unity by leveraging the power of collective right the collective yes and i just remembered one thing will you do if you don't mind me interrupting please please uh, so they like you said right normal man doing amazing thing so we are very familiar with this line right har har mahadev we are very familiar with that but in this particular trilogy amish has used this line where shiva is trying to inspire everybody in the meluha empire and he tells people har ek mahadev like everybody is a mahadev and har har mahadev and that is so inspiring i literally had goosebumps while reading that because i felt wow like it might not be the true meaning of that sentence but for me since then it has been that like whenever i hear har har mahadev i think about this line from meluha like it had that kind of impact on me that is wonderful right i i i absolutely agree with you i also had that effect because uh, when you read books of this sort especially with how with where we were from an age pov uh, we are questioning everything around ourselves and then you see such positive representation of a character that we have been explicitly told not to question we are not allowed to question religion in a lot of our homes irrespective of the religion that is being practiced because asking questions about it maybe often is controversial maybe often leads to unpleasant answers which leads to more questions and a lot of parents want to avoid that i totally understand but then you have a book of this sort bringing in something as simple as an incantation right har har mahadev all of us have heard this term uh, if you live in india if you have a tv if you move by any temple you know what this uh, sounds like but did you ever sit down and question the meaning behind it when i heard those lines i questioned the meaning behind it and i found myself wondering about the meaning behind all of these other things that we say right like jai mata ji kyu bolte hain ha so i think one of the gifts that this book gave me was it gave me the right questions i should i should ask and right? questions like which religion is better and all these are very obvious questions very tem- technically in my opinion in my young immature stupid opinion very pointless questions the important questions are questions of this sort कि ये कोई एक जो चीज है दिस थिंग दैट यू सी और दैट यू हियर अबाउट और दैट इज बीइंग प्रीच टू यू व्हाई इज इट सेट अप द वे दैट इट इज दैट इट इज व्हाट इज द स्टोरी बिहाइंड इट व्हाट इज द रीजनिंग बिहाइंड इट आई थिंक फिक्शन बुक्स ऑफ दिस सॉर्ट आर वेरी गुड स्टेपिंग स्टोन्स इनटू द सीरियस स्टफ बिकॉज़ देन यू हैव दिस पिक्चराइजेशन गोइंग फॉर यू एंड स्पीकिंग ऑफ इंडियन माइथोलॉजी अनलाइक तियारा नानोक or uh, nos mythology or anything of this sort indian mythology comes in the form of uh, scriptures and shlokas hamare yahan pe prose nahi likha jata tha we did poetry right we did recitation india had a tradition of oral storytelling so when you sit down and read these scriptures that we have 
इट्स डिफिकल्ट समटाइम्स विद द काइंड ऑफ एजुकेशन दैट वी आर गिवन इन दिस डे एंड एज तो वेन वी हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ अ फिक्शनल फाउंडेशन जहाँ पे विजुअलाइजेशन का काम ऑथर्स ने करा हुआ है सो इट इज इट इज ईजियर टू पिक्चर सम ऑफ दिस थिंग्स लाइक वेन आई रेड अबाउट आर द नरेश्वर आफ्टर रीडिंग आई पिक्चर डेट राइट द मैस्क्यूल एंड द फेमिन एनर्जी कमिंग टूगेदर टू डू वॉट इट डज इट्स इट्स ब्यूटिफुल दैट आई गेट टू अंडरस्टैंड अ लॉट ऑफ दीज थिंग्स एट सच अ यंग एज बिकॉज सम ऑथर्स वर्क helped me make the difficult work more accessible so yeah on to aniket aniket please unmute yourself and school all of us in the art of reading please uh thank you binati for hosting this topic which takes me back many many years ago when coincidentally i was struggling with my reading habits i was trying to rebuild that um a small point of view i i used to read a lot during my college days but once i became an employee and i'm trying to impress my line management and clients and deliver those deliverables which would never end i i lost my habit of reading so it was around 2016 when i we started rebuilding my habit of reading and that's when i uh, stumbled upon these fiction books uh my wife uh, we were dating back then so she had read all these books so uh, uh, actually that was the first book i just took from someone else's recommendation and uh, also she had read that so uh, i said to myself to because you are in that phase where you have to want to impress the other one as well don't you dare miss out on like drop these three books i took all three of them in one go and uh, i began reading it even to this day i wonder how amish was able to write a book on a very very favorite god if i were to say or publicized god if i were to say or rather let's not use the word god a, a popular figure in the religious sermons uh, without getting an outrage without getting you know uh, backlash i think it to the author's credit he he used the mythology uh, and then crafted fiction out of it like that's that's a very very fine art he tried to replicate it with uh, ram as well uh, but i had never read those three books maybe because the the shiva trilogy was so good that i didn't want to you know go through the ram trilogy and ruin that experience for me a lot of things for even those who read a lot or those who ever plan to write anything uh amish has li- literally laid down the red carpet stating that you could take something that is very well known and create your own world around it so if we know about shiva we know about you know the indus valley we know about entire geography it's uh, his the trilogy of the books are uh, more of a uh, geography lesson as well uh, even including persia in the part 2 part two or part three i can't recall exactly it's been a lot of years so it's a great lesson as well if you wish to write something on fiction lines uh, you can engage the readers by taking a familiar topic familiar character and weaving your own story i see a lot of similarity in jeffrey archer's books where he uh, takes uh, characters or he which he weaves out of his pigment of imagination and then uh, events around the book are uh, depicting real events so you see the world war and uh, global events so i if anyone is aspiring to write a book out there there's, there's a great example that amish has left and you can write on the religious characters without getting people offended uh, one fun fact ever since i read these book every time there's a mo- movie coming on the shiva subject i hope that it's not built on the astrology of the book i thought brahmastra might be somewhere close to you know being adapted to it and thank god it was not because i don't think any movie will be able to do justice to those three books even though the ending of the third book was a very damp end uh, but those three books can't be matched with any movie or web series yeah that's my two cents binati the best two cents ever i swear that brahmastra thing you said I was scared about that as well because 
when i heard that the lead character is called shiva i was like are shit they are working on meluha and i cannot for the life of me see ranveer kapoor as shiva it was so abhorrent to imagine that scenario and i i i had similar thoughts to you ki kyu kyu karna don't ruin this book some things are too precious and i have a reading recommendation for people who enjoy damesh and wish to read a female centric character with a similar uh, storytelling angle uh, i personally liked palace of illusions much more than uh, the shiva trilogy because oh my god the writing and the way that that author has dealt with this supernatural and natural thing she will very casually write uh, that the palace uh, created by maya disappeared because maya ka jal tha or somebody some servants from the palace burned it down so that nobody other than the pandavas can live in it so like, that is so smart right you don't uh, kind of clarify whether it was magic or whether it was just science explained smartly so but just that alone uh, and what book 3 did in terms of following raita on this entire universe uh, that was taken care of by chitra diva I, diva kurni karuni can chitra someone that. Yes, yes, Diva Karuni. Yes, yes, yes. We will definitely do a live discussing that yeah. book too. Twenty or thirtieth person to talk about Palace of Illusions this year for me. We should actually do a session on Palace of Illusions because I could fan girl about it all day. Done. Next week it is Palace of Illusions. We will do Mythology Week. Ah, uh, Mythology Month. Maybe awesome. on this. <laughs> on this also to those of you who are new to this room this is how we decide what books to read we are talking amongst each other and it's like are next week ye so this is new for us uh, this is not new for us this is just regular programming so don't be alarmed uh on to i suppose a very controversial question to ask readers uh which was the favorite character and man ho to why bhi bata do Uh, let's start with Supriya. Supriya, I'm putting you on the spot here, but yes, let's start with you. Which was your favorite character, and maybe tell us why. So, I am a bit conflicted because, of course, the protagonist uh, was like, uh, I, I, I clearly remember how mesmerized I was with the whole uh, character of uh, Shiva, and like you mentioned it earlier, right? the struggle with self esteem the guilt and like that eternal struggle to do the right thing but sometimes you just can't do the right thing and like how do you move forward in life with the guilt and how do you learn and learn things that was also like anaksha anaksha was right we were like at this cusp of becoming adults and i think i like had a lot of lessons out of that like uh, that series but another character which i really liked at that time was ayurvedi so no spoilers here but she is like the chief uh, i'd say medical person who has like this amazing uh, knowledge like she's shown as like this lady who has uh, immense knowledge about the medicinal world and it, it almost felt like if she is tending to a person then this person is 100% going to you know feel better and because so much is spoken about ayurveda and like as of course you know in the last few years everyone is realizing the potential and the power of this indian medical science so it is nice to see a woman you know being the head of this whole medical science which was like so mystical that even like the main gods could it like they could go and fight but they couldn't save lives the way ayurveda could so i'd say these two characters fantastic love that answer arangsha let's go for your favorite character uh, i don't really remember that much i don't remember ayurvedi for instance but i remember sati and i i i remember falling in love with her when we first met her although i don't really remember why but i think she had this whole badass independent woman vibe right like she was a princess but she was also an administrator and she was an equal to shiva in all he did 
Uh, she was not like like typically when we read books and we see female characters, especially in male cent like where there is a male hero, right? The woman is there to she is just placed to you know keep the hero's journey forward. That's it. But Sati was like so amazing and uh, like no spoilers, but it was very sad like what happened to her. Like anybody who has read Indian mythology knows that Shiva and Sati's story and Sati died. Right, so that is what happens in this book as well. And I remember I cried when she died because that scene was so heart touching. I, I still remember some of it was a uh, battle scene, a fight scene, and I remember some scenes, I like some moments of that fight. And that was the first time I had read a fight of that sort in a book. Like I was not very used to reading fantasy back then so in fantasy fights are common like sword fights and knife fights but in normal contemporary fiction we don't see fights like this right so this was my first taste of a fight in fiction and there was a woman fighting somebody who is super powerful and it was so heart touching i literally loved that uh, scene and i feel that that was the turning point for me like after sati died the whole book went downhill for me i don't really remember why but that was my intent uh, like impression at that time but yeah my favorite character definitely is sati of this entire series when fantastic i also had sati as my favorite character but because the answer is gone i can talk about my second favorite character and i'm such a dumbass i forgot to ask aniket uh, what his favorite character aniket aap bata do fir main batati hu what was your favorite character and if possible why let us know vinati unmute kar lo oh ah uh, i i was asking uh, aniket what his favorite character is because uh, yeah, yeah. I, i was waiting for you to have forgotten me because oh no 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 i apologize apologize <laughs> no, no. because i forgotten the entire uh, characters of the book so i remember the storyline now but it's been so long that i've Uh, I forgot the characters of the book, but it was definitely not Shiva. Uh, like the main character was obviously the where the storyline was revolving around, but there was one character I can't recall. Uh, yeah, Sati's character was very admirable. Uh, there was one more character I can't recall. So, are you thinking of Parvateshwar? जनरल हू हैज टू डिसाइड राइट कि नए इंसान को सपोर्ट करें या डू वी गो बैक टू द बेजिक्स एंड दैट वॉज गोइंग टू बी माई आंसर द आर्मी जनरल द वेरी रिजिड वन नॉट आर्मी जनरल हू काइंड ऑफ टर्न्स टू नॉट बी दैट वन नोट एज द बुक्स प्रोग्रेस absolutely <laughs> you know absolutely no i suppose no compulsions here uh thank you so much for sharing i love that you said that the titular character is not your favorite character uh, that makes sense because for a lot of people uh, this entire visualization of deification it's difficult to kind of uh, swallow specifically how the character changes ekdam matlab 360 degree hi bol lo from book 1 to book 3 specifically where the book ends it's 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 understandable why favorite is the word that is not associated next to it uh, denise i haven't come to you yet have you read the book and if you have favorite characters rough thoughts about the book let us know hi benati and hi everyone i read this book a uh, couple of years back when i was working and it was a highly recommended book by everyone in the same you know on the same floor practically all of us had a copy of each and it was a craze a real real craze and amir i i um, vaguely remember that we all had our opinions on the conclusions and especially with the last uh, book that came out everyone had a common um, answer that the ending was very damp and there was not a single soul who said you know spoke differently about it everyone had the same thing so it was very very surprising like you know a brilliant book a brilliant author well researched and it was very uh, i could visualize the scenes practically from page number 1 to the end 
so it was very appealing and i couldn't leave it so this is one author who has uh, got me hooked on to a little bit of um, mythology and me i'm a catholic i did had broadened my horizons from uh, you know uh, knowing about different gods like lord shiva is basically the one that we all look up to and especially when i went to rishikesh there is an uh, statue of him sitting in the meditative uh, pose that's when i could recollect the book otherwise it's been like ages since i've read it and probably i'll have to reread because all the characters have gone the back you know they are all stored up and they're waiting to be resurrected probably that's my take fantastic i mean that thing about the ending all of us also kind of said that thing about the ending i think anybody who picked up that series from the first book i think we expected it to get better with book 2 and then book 3 and in some ways the writing became crisper the pacing became so much better with the next book but then book 3 was what i like to call in gujarati we say this thing called kothra mathi biladu translation is you pull uh, you you see a bag of treasures right and you are you are like oh the bag ke andar treasure rahega mast mast sona chandi pata nahi kya kya niklega and then you open the bag and out comes a biladu or a small cat so i think uh, that is what happened with a lot of people we expected some sort of profound conclusion and what we got was well what we got and uh, i think uh, if i am to draw a parallel it's like meditation a lot of us go into meditation because we heard some tech bro or some dude bro or some boss babe talk about how meditation has made them a millionaire overnight and then we sit and meditate and it's like oh ye to khali shanti se baithna hai and then you realize that मेडिटेशन जस्ट मेडिटेशन अलोन मतलब नहीं होगा तो दी एक्साइटमेंट यू हैड अराउंड मेडिटेशन टेपर्स ऑफ सो आई आई थिंक पोएटिकली स्पीकिंग दैट इज वॉट बुक थ्री वॉज द डीमिस्टिफिकेशन ऑफ एक्सपेक्टेशन एंड हाउ एक्सपेक्टेशन जनरली इफ यू वर टू रीड द बुक अलोन विदाउट बुक वन एंड टू मे बी इट्स नॉट दैट बैड ऑफ एन एंडिंग बट अरे वन और टू के साथ पढ़ते पढ़ते तो इट डेफिनेटली सीम्स लाइक अ बिलाडू कमिंग आउट ऑफ दैट ट्रेजर का कोठरा सो आई आई टोटली एम्फिथाइज दैट ऑन टू लेट्स से वन ऑफ द थीम्स इन द बुक विच पर्सनली आई अप्रिशिएटेड अ लॉट विच इज जर्नीज आर अबाउट मिस्टेक्स डिड यू लाइक दैट टेक और डिड यू विश दैट माइथोलॉजी वाला एंगल और the deus ex machina angle where uh, plot fixes everything or where there is god there are miracles uh, the absence of that mostly in all three of the books i think that worked massively in its favor and that journeys are about mistakes so i would love like brief takes about that from all of you and then we will come to the final question of the evening which shall be posed by co-host supriya let's start with you only supriya okay um wait what was your question again because i started thinking about my question <laughs> your question is the one you put in the chat and the question i have asked is the theme of journeys are about mistake uh, about mistakes uh, what wh- what was your interpretation of that as you read the book so i personally really loved that absolutely uh this is so the book came out i think uh, in 2010 11 or something uh, and this is like when we are transition uh, transitioning into like you know the world of like the new world that like not college anymore not family anymore so i don't think there was any role model or any example around me which spoke about mistakes it was like you know keep doing your hard work keep persevering and of course success is long nobody spoke about you know what i tried multiple things i fail at multiple things but it's okay and we move on nobody stopped and spoke about 
humans make mistakes and it was so ingrained i think in in the way we are brought up also that mistakes to aapko karni hi nahi hai like how can you make a mistake right even though we would have this uh, proverb of the earth is human to forgive is divine or something right it was like god like status bano like you know always try to achieve that so when you had a book that spoke about a god who wasn't god in that at that point in the book making mistakes acknowledging it learning from it and still moving forward that was like mind blowing for me but i think that is also why most of this related to a character like it's unthinkable now if you say it in a line that i relate to this god it's like okay but god is god and you're human but you could relate to that character because of this the reality is this we make mistakes we make mistakes in our relationships we make mistakes in the things we thought we you know would appeal to us and then they don't so the journey that this book had i you very rightly put that the theme is life is about the mistakes and what you learn from it right this book was perfect in that sense and to the point where you said that the the gujarati proverb that you spoke about book 3 in my mind book 3 is like season 8 of game of thrones so i would recommend you guys to still read the book maybe actually you know what read book 3 also heartbreak hona chahiye aap readers ki life mein so read the third book also and then maybe i'll probably give a recommendation uh, once everyone has gone through meme moment you gave supriya meme moment i will try to make it <laughs> let's see whether you were viral uh anangsha uh, give us your take on the same journeys are about mistakes uh, what was your take uh, on this with the book so it's surprising like it's, it's it's surprising for me that you're asking this question because i don't know how this is related to the book i mean i don't remember how this is related to the book so i cannot really say that you know this book gave me this less lesson that journeys are about mistakes but yeah i do remember that that the way amish portrayed the character of shiva right though he is a god he is not perfect and he seeks advice and help from a lot of people so the way he succeeds in the end is not only his credit the credit belongs to everybody who is involved in the story so that was my take away from this book right you know i had this um, because that was also when i read this book i was also in that phase that you know like have to prepare for iit and you know have to write a success story for myself and that 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 phase when you are preparing for board exams and all these competitive exams and stuff right and i i got this message that uh, yes it takes like uh, like you know like you to write a truly remarkable story you need more people around you you need like people who can contribute in positive ways in your journey so I think that was the time when I started actually actively like uh, looking for people who made an impact in my life and uh, being grateful to them because uh, before that if people are lost in their childhood dreams like I am the hero of my story the whole world revolves around me that's it but I think this book sort of gave me that change in perspective and that turning point where I realized that okay I have come this far but whole credit is not mine there are so many people who have helped me and i think it's a humbling thought to always rec- recognize the efforts of other people in your life because no matter how amazing we are alone we can't do anything right we do need our support system so i guess that was my take away from this book and i hope this answers the question you had vinati i think it not only answers the question i had but also improves the question which is asking people for their key takeaways right rather than telling them mine so your key takeaway take away i take it is one of our favorite lines which is har ek mahadev har ek mein hai mahadev and we have to acknowledge that about ourselves and about each other so love that love that aniket give us your ta- best takeaway from the book Uh, if you remember it because i know that all of us have read this book eons ago so yeah one thing that is just stands out for me is the element of somras ah. how the entirety of the book is re- revolving around somras where in the first two parts somras is you know is the uh, elixir of life it is 
how even it saves lives of Shiva as well. And uh, eventually it turns out to be a root cause of a lot of sorrow. And uh, of course, spoiler alert, sorry, for those who are listening, <laughs> I now have not read. But the, the thing was, if there's something good and the, you think about it, there could be bad about it as well. If there, and uh, a great example of it lies in social media itself. If there is something good, there could be a bad side to it as well. And uh, it also gave me a point on, you know, think again, how is, how do you rectify that? Or uh, to solve that entire thing in the book, it, it came to, you know, dire consequences uh, toward the end of the book, which is perhaps also a reason why none of us liked it because the way, uh, you know, we all love the hero's end, we all love a happy ending and the, the kind of the end that it, the book had in part three was not a happy ending. Because sometimes uh, it, it is hum humanity where even irrationality is defended, as you see even in modern times, where irrationality is leading to a global crisis. We're not talking about that yet because it, uh, most of the media is touching upon the Ukraine-Russia thing, but they're not really realizing how that war is causing a huge uh, strain on global food prices, especially with wheat. So, you know, uh, uh, sometimes irrationality is uh, defended by people who should think again and think their stance again. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to connect the dots from Somras and the story. Uh, so sometimes you have to go with the uh, worst of the means to solve the crisis. I think uh, if you think again, you might avert that. So I, I'm also very recently influenced a lot by Adam Grant's Think Again. So I'm connecting that book with Emil Hoa's trad uh, Shiva Trilogy. So if you're if you have made a mistake, correct again. There's no harm. Because if you don't correct, you might end up becoming the force of irrationality. And that could eventually be your undoing. Wow. That was such a poetic take. And uh, you're right. Somras, somras is something we can learn from. There is some Somras that exists in every aspect of human life. Be it individualistic, be it collective. And behind that somras, there's a lot of, I suppose, panaceas or cure-alls, something that could cure anything. And there is a flip side to that cure-all. That cure-all is not just going to manifest itself out of nothing. It is going to exact a cost. What is that cost? Have you ever asked yourself that question? A lot of us don't. And we justify that as rational thought when in reality what it is is extremely selfish irrational thought you are just focused on your problem and you have spotted this one solution which is like a cure-all type of a situation and you are like a reho gya problem solved and then you get it done not realizing what you are missing what you are uh, ignoring uh, as a result of that so wonderful takeaway, Aniket. Thank you so much. Look for the somras in your life and ask yourself questions. Ki is somras milne ke piche cost kya hai? So yes, Denise, we would love to have your takeaway. And uh, then there is just one second. There's someone named Sudhir who is trying to speak. Sudhir, I'm trying to get you to allow to speak. The app is I don't know buggy. Just, just uh, wait patiently. Just give me two more minutes. I'll try to fix this. Uh, Denise, back to you. Uh, give us your key takeaway. Um, I'll be honest. I at that point, the point of time when I was reading this book, I had the very thing. You know, as every avid reader wants to start writing his or her own book. But one thing I learned in this, Amish has taken lots of pain in doing research. So the, my takeaway take was like, you have to do lots and lots of research before you start penning down your thoughts, before getting it into the draft mode and to the final thing. So, you know, research mode was very, very important, critical. As a reader to how do you, you know, justify your stance on certain points. I was open up to many of the spiritual aspects also, but in a fiction, fictional way, which I enjoyed thoroughly. So no biases, no nothing. 
Amish kept it pure and uh, totally, what do you say, you know, no nuisance kind of thing. So you didn't have any political party uh, thinking of banning the books or something. I didn't kind of hear any of it. So a good book, a good author, well researched points. And yes, life lessons also were there, which is now really difficult for me to bring it out. But yeah, I enjoyed it. So that's my take. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic. So I absolutely cannot see my screen right now. Uh, Sudhir, if you are still trying to get on the stage, my screen has gone blank. If you could do me a favor and raise your hand again, maybe then the screen, will, the thing will allow me to take it forward. Uh, as uh, Sudhriya also told me uh, in the chat, there's something happening. The entire screen is going up and down, up and down. So I don't know what's up. I had updated the app before we took this live. Uh, let's come to the final question of the evening. Supriya, ask away. Ask us your delightful question. And I, I would love to hear from everyone, one by one, the answer to this question. Yes. So, uh, I follow uh, Bollywood news. And because I'm combining my love of Bollywood and books here together, Let's make things easier for Shekhar Kapoor, uh, even though he's not listening to us, but let's make things easier for him. And my question to you guys is, who would you cast in the main roles? So the main roles are, the, uh, are Shiva, uh, Sati. Yeah, just these two. I'll make things easier for you. Who would you cast in these two roles? Anavsha, I'll start with you. God, I think I'm the wrong person to answer this because I don't really follow Bollywood. I know there are many really handsome new people who have come. I don't really know their names. <laughs> I think I'll just listen to what other people say because the old Bollywood uh, actors and actresses who I know, somehow none of them fit into these roles. Uh, so as long I'll as they don't fit Lok Kumar, I think it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I'll just listen to what other people say to this question. Supriya, you should Jaleed. tell us your take because you say you follow Bollywood news, right? So I would love to hear your visualization here. Okay. Um, so I think for Sati, uh, I'm, I'm torn between Alia Bhatt and Deepika. Alia because I saw what she did in Gangubai and I thought that, you know, she could play a good role that has innocence, like she can play a role that a protagonist would fall in love with but also is strong when needed to be so maybe Alia and um, for the actor I don't know maybe Rizik Roshan but if he like does just I don't know whether he'll do justice to it or not so either him or or and maybe this could be controversial or Farhan Akhtar so those are my like oh I love, see, I love Farhan Akhtar Actually, yeah. somehow they fit into the roles in my head. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to pull an Aniket and escape this room to avoid answering this question. Of course not. You have to answer. I, I have, I'm also just like Anangsha. I have zero idea about uh, actors and actresses' ka name. I don't think anyone in mainstream Bollywood right now has the potential to pull off Itna magnetic persona wala characters, uh, like like just just the smoldering stare. Who do you think could pull off those eyes? I don't think anyone, at least in the mainstream Bollywood space, has that potential. And uh, in the OTT game, I mean, I do know actress actors and actresses. Matlab faces pata hai, but I don't know their names. So this is the tragedy I am dealing with. Uh, <laughs> right now i mean i can i can see the faces but i don't know their names uh the the lady who played uh, bulbul in the netflix thing i think she could play sati very well uh and uh in terms of actor hmm i think the 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 the, the i don't know his name i'll do a smart google and and by the time i figure out that answer maybe deepak can tell us his views on this hello deepak yeah <clears throat> hi hi there hi everyone 
I I certainly feel that uh, I go with Supriya as far as the choice of actor is concerned. Yes, Rithik Roshan I think fits the bill dramatically, and uh, in fact I remember the very first time when I was reading Immortals, uh, I could uh, befit Rithik in that role right from the time when he had the chillum in his hand when Shiva had chillum in his hand up that mountain. I think I've been sort of looking at Rithik to play that perfect role. And I think uh, in terms of the female star cast, definitely Priyanka for me fits the bill for Sati. I think she's got that dynamism in terms of her gravitas that the character requires and at the same time the elegance and the persona. So those are my two takes actually. Wonderful. So I was thinking of this guy who played Shiva on TV. I don't know how many of you watched that TV show. But I mean he was no, pretty right. cool. Yes, I looked his name up. Uh, I didn't know his name and I was like, Shiva, the actor who played Shiva on TV is such a bad answer. <laughs> but it, I, I, he, he did a pretty good job with the eyes, I, I think. But again, I was very young when that TV show was on air. So what do you know? And then there's this other actor who used to play Chanakya in this show called Chandragupta. He also had like that magnetic personality. But I don't think actors of this sort can sell movies, which is so sad. But it's true. So, yes. That concludes Amish's uh, Meluha trilogy for today. Next week, 9pm, we'll be meeting for Palace of Illusions by Chitra Banerjee Divak Karuni. I always get her surname wrong. See you guys then. Thank you so much for joining me, my lovely co-hosts today, Anangsha and Supriya. My wonderful friend Denise and Divak and Aniket for joining in as well. We'll see you next week. Bye.